Hey y'all, this is Dino. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so I am back with a bit of an informational video today. I have a lot of people ask me different kinds of questions um, in the comments below my videos. So I thought I would go over as many as I can try to remember today. So I hope that you find this helpful um, if you're thinking of doing any kind of craft fairs or whatever. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, how many craft fairs do I do, I do a year? I don't normally do more than two. This year, I only did one due to my mother um, being ill. So I'm really glad that I made the decision of skipping the one in September because with my mother passing away on August 24th, I wouldn't have been able to have it all together. So I'm glad I made that decision. Family first, friends, family first. Okay, so um, I usually do at least one at Christmas. That's the big one at Christmas. Some people have asked me, how do I find craft fairs? Um, you can just like contact your city, see if they have any going on, or your local churches or schools. That's a great, a great resource for you to find um, any craft fairs in your general area. Now, these opinions are all just my own. Um, I didn't find a book of these. These are just my own and this is my experience. So I thought I would share my experiences with you of things that, that I needed for my booth. So I hope that this is helpful to you. Okay, so I, what I do is I always make a list and this is my faithful uh, trusty little clipboard and y'all believe it or not, it's purple. It's not pink. Huh. I've had it for a long time. But anyway, I revised my list today. I typed it out and um, I always just go through and just make myself a nice list of everything I'm going to need. Um, and I always kind of start out th thinking, what do I need for my booth in general? So, of course, you're going to need your canopy. You're going to need tables. Now, my canopy, I, I have a pink one. I'm thinking about replacing it for a white one. But I might not do it this year just because I don't want to buy it. Um, I've already got a pink one and it works just fine. But, um, yeah, I've got a pink one. My daughter actually gave it to me for Christmas several years back. And she asked me, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I want a pink canopy for when I do craft fairs. So, that's what she gave me for Christmas. She got it at Academy, I believe. So, anyway, um, tables. I always bring at least two six-foot tables. And I usually bring a smaller table for the center. And it's usually, I believe, like four foot, four feet length in the length. It's kind of small. Um, it's kind of like not as wide as the other ones. But I use that table like to sit there, put my things on, you know, and all that. Um, I'm thinking of replacing it maybe with another six foot table and having three six foot tables. And that kind of gives me a little bit more space to put items on the tables. Um, I'm thinking about it. If I can find one for like, say, $30, like like the ones I have. The tables I got, I have, I actually got them at um, Costco last year. And I got them for like $29. They're six foot and they fold in half so you can store them really well. That's the kind of tables I have. So, um, yeah, they it works out great because then when you're, when you're transporting everything to your craft fair... Your tables, you know, aren't as bulky and big because they fold in half. So that's the kind I use. I think that you can find them most anywhere, but I found mine at Costco. And so I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead because years past, last year was the first year I had my own tables. In the years past, I always borrowed my daughter's and she always had to scrounge around to see who she would let borrow her tables. So I thought it was time for me to go ahead and start buying my own tables. So I did. Um, I might invest in a third six foot though. That way then it gives me a little bit more space. Now, whenever I set up my craft fair, I usually do mine like U shaped. That instead of you sitting up inside and people can see on all three sides, I want people to come into my booth. So it's kind of like a, kind of like goes in and it's like a, oh, okay, what about an upside down U or a U shape? That's what I wanted. That's how I set mine up. So, um, and I find that brings people in. Now, these are only my opinions. If you set, if you do craft fairs and you set yours up different, do what works for you. But this is what works for me. So, anyway. So, tables, chairs, and canopy. Chairs, chairs, chairs. Don't forget, a couple of years ago, I did a craft fair. And, oh, my goodness, let me just tell you. I brought my chairs, but the lady next to me had a beautiful booth. 
and she was all alone doing it by herself and had to finally get a hold of someone to come out and bring her because she forgot chairs. I felt really bad for her because I was about ready to give her one of my chairs. I said, do you want one of, my, one of my chairs? And she said, no, no, no. I finally got a hold of my son. But can you imagine being out there all day long and not having a chair? That would be horrible. So make sure you have a chair. I usually bring four chairs because my kids or my grandkids, they usually come sit up there with me. They think it's a lot of fun. My husband is there with me. And um, so we need a place to sit. And because um, it's, you know, even though, you know, craft fairs are just like, like all day it's still a long time to stand so um if some people have asked me how many how many craft fairs or how many days is my craft fair i do one day craft craft fairs i don't do two day i don't know if i have the energy for that it's a lot of work and um yeah you um that's up to you what you want to do but i do one day and that works for me Usually by the end of the day, my husband and I are pooped out and we go home and we crash. So, um, but yeah. Okay, so the next thing that you need for your booth, and this is what I need. So a couple of, time, a couple of years ago, well, it's probably about six, seven, eight years ago when I did a crap fair around the same time, you know, first part of December, it was a very windy day. And oh my goodness, let me just tell you, my husband had brought some stakes and some rope so he could kind of, you know, stake down my, my booth poles and all that. And oh my goodness, he fought with it so much because it was very windy that day. So a couple of years ago, I invested in, and I'm going to see if I can bring this up here and show you. I've done a video like this before and I did show these, but I thought I would show it again. Okay. You can see that. These are called quick shade. Okay. And as you see here, they're like weights, like you would like if you're weightlifting or whatever. And they have a cutout here, and they are for the poles of your canopy. So this is what I use. And you can kind of see and see if I can show you. I always put them back in here every time. And um, sorry about that, y'all. This is what it looks like. So, they're nice and heavy, very heavy, and um, they work wonderful. We got these at um, Academy a couple of years ago, and it was the best 25 or 30 bucks that we spent. My, back, my box is starting to get crazy on me. I might have to store them in something else. So anyway, that is what I use. I don't do no no stakes in the ground or anything because now too, where I, where my booth was the last two years, it's set on concrete. So having a stake is not going to, you can't put it down into the ground. Um, some people ask me, do you do indoor or outdoor craft fairs? You know what y'all? I like the outdoor. You want me to tell you why? Because a lot of people, they got to go outside to get to their car. They're going to pass your booth on the way. So that is why I choose outdoor. Plus it's lighter outside. And the one I do, they have an indoor and outdoor. The indoor booths cost more. The outdoor booths cost, I think like, um, maybe 10 or $15 less. But you know, I already, I, you know, I pay $80 for my booth fee. And, but this craft fair that I do is very well advertised and it's very big. So, um, it gets a lot of traffic. So, you know, you quickly make back your $80. It's a, well, I, I'm always just proud to pay the fee. <laughs> I won't pay any more than $80 because some, the people inside, you know, sometimes their booths a hundred. I've seen booths 150 inside. I'm not going to pay that. That's crazy. Um, but $80. I'll pay it because, you know, it's a lot of fun and yeah, it's just fun to get out and meet people and stuff like that. Okay. So don't forget your tie down. It's very important. Um, so you also, I always bring Christmas lights and I just bring a box of them if I don't use them fine. But one year I my Christmas, my, my booth had to stay open until eight o'clock at night and it was already dark. It started getting dark like at five. And so you needed lighting and so Christmas lights, we wrapped them around the poles when we were setting up my craft booth and, um, and yeah, it worked out absolutely wonderful having Christmas lights. Um, decorations, you want to make your booth inviting. Don't forget inviting booths and bring in people. 
um, extension cords. My husband will have all those ready for me. I always bring at least one or two extension cords. You want to make sure you have extension cords for your cell phone. You know, you want to be able to plug it in if you need it and things like that. Um, zip ties. Now, I have this little, little plastic drawer thing. And I used this last year. And look, I still have zip ties in here. I keep them in. I keep zip ties. You will need them. Um, scissors. Super important. Bring a good pair of scissors. Okay, items that you need for your table. So, last year, what I did is I used invested in sheets. And I just draped sheets across my table. And then I put Christmas paper over that. And it was just so beautiful. I loved it. It's festive. But the only thing is, if it gets a little windy when you have an outdoor booth, you know, your tablecloths are kind of flying underneath your tables. And if you've stored your bins there, it's kind of an eyesore to me. So, I invested in these. I ordered these last week on Amazon. And it is a stretchy tablecloth. And this is six feet for six feet table, and it goes down to the onto the side, and it has these little things that hook um, underneath the legs of your tables. So I've already purchased two of these. If I decide to get um, a third six foot table, I'll order another one. I found these on Amazon for ten, for ten dollars. I believe it's like ten dollars, maybe ten and some change. But I ordered two, and this site that I have that I found them on. They actually um, had many colors. Now, the the one that I there I found another one. It was like thirteen dollars, but they had tons of colors. And I almost went with like white, or I almost went with pink. But I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go with basic black. And I still am going to use um, Christmas paper, and I'm gonna lay it over my tables. So I think I might go with like buffalo print or something this year and lay it over. So having my, my black ones, at least now I won't have to worry about my tablecloths flying underneath my tables. They will fit nice and it will be nice underneath the legs of my tables. And I won't have to worry about it going anywhere. And I won't be trying to tape it all down like I've done in the past. So tablecloth shawl. Baskets for your items. Um, I don't have any in here with me, but let me just say... Ba the plastic baskets that you can get like a Dollar Tree or something like that. I've been invested in several of them. Usually every year I'll buy a couple more. But I just go to Dollar Tree and get them for a buck. You know, just get some nice long ones so you can display your items in. Um, Let's see. Oh, I wrote baskets for your items twice. Look at that. That's called a overachiever there, I guess. Okay, so tape. Make sure you bring tape. So I always bring like some scotch tape. And I always bring like some kind of packing tape or something like that if you need to have something heavy duty um, to, to tape down. Clothes pins. If you need clothes pins, you know, bring some clothes pins. I always keep some and I have some in this basket here that I always keep everything on. Rope. I don't have any here with me, but just some like thin rope. If you want to make yourself some ropes going across the, the poles of your booths, so you can hang things on. It's a great way to display them, great way to get people to come in and see what you've got when you've got things hanging up. Um, paper clips. I'm keeping paper clips in my thing. I'm going to have paper clips. You never know when you're going to need them. Um, also, one thing I did not write down on my list here, and let me just show you. These right here, these are shower curtain rings, and I use them every year. Um, just got them like $2 at Walmart. I don't know. There might be 12 or 15 in here. These things work wonderfully. These will fit over your poles, like if you're hanging something up. And like I hang lanyards on these. I've hung signs on with these. And they just, you know, they're just they're shower curtain rings, but you know, they'll just kind of flip underneath. Things won't be flying off. These are a great investment to have at your craft fair. I will not forget those. Okay, so um, other items that you might need, you want to make sure you have some bags. I didn't pull out my bags, but I do have some. I use plastic bags with the handles on them. Um, some people use paper. I just use the plastic ones. I get mine on clearbags.com in the clearance section on their website. Usually I can get like 50 of them for, I don't know, eight or nine bucks. So that's actually pretty good. And I usually bring two or three sizes. 
So make sure you um, make sure you have bags. And if you want to have tissue paper to wrap your items in, I didn't write that down. Tissue paper. It's nice if you have something and you need to wrap it up in some tissue paper. I don't know. It just makes it look a little bit more presentable. Business cards. So I use this little three drawer thing and I keep business cards in here. I made these last year and I'll just use them again this year. I'm not going to make any more to change the design. I've got still got plenty of them. And whenever I sold something, I put one of them in every bag. And let me tell you, last year... Um, I handed out business cards with every purchase, and let me tell you, I had one lady that actually called me twice, or messaged me twice, because I don't put my phone number on my business card, because it's my personal number, so I put an email address, and this lady wrote me two times, and I would meet her, like, at the Walmart parking lot, and open up the back of my car, and she bought more stuff. I probably sold another $250 just to this lady because I had business cards with my email on there, okay? So that's super important. Also to uh, Miss Jackie, she knows who she is. Um, she lives here locally and she's a part of my craft group and follows me on YouTube and all that. But that is how I met her. She came and purchased something from my craft fair and after that she contacted me and wanted to buy some more stuff. I met her at the Hobby Lobby parking lot and um, she chose what she wanted and yeah. And that's how I met Sweet Miss Jackie. Okay, um, so business cards. Now, make sure you also bring change. So, I usually just bring, like, um, like I have this pouch that I had made before. It's a nice little zipper pouch. You're able to put everything you need in here. I made this one at one time. I thought that was pretty cool. And so, I usually keep that one in my bin. Or this one right here I got from Sweet Miss Lori. And so, maybe I'll use this one this year. Um, maybe, I don't know. I might just stick with the bigger one. It might be a little easier. I can fit a little more in it. But make sure you bring plenty of change. I usually bring maybe about 50 or $60, mainly in fives and ones. And, um, usually I don't even need to use all my change. Um, the next item is one of your very super, really important, like should be almost your number one thing to have at your craft fair. A credit card reader, y'all. Um, I did not have one two years ago, and I probably lost about six or seven hundred dollars in sales. And so last year, I got myself the Square, and I literally, um, if I wouldn't have taken credit cards this past last year, um, in 2018, I would have lost out on six hundred and fifty in sales because I made six hundred fifty dollars just in credit card sales. So this is very very important, and I just. I just put this in the bottom of my phone and swipe. I've even used it at work. Like if someone wanted to buy something from me and I still had it in my purse, they're like, I don't have any cash. I'll bring you some cash. I'm like, well, I can take your credit card. And I just swipe it. Now, the Square Reader, I believe, charges like a 2% fee and plus a dime or something like that. So this year, um, if they use a credit card, if they use a credit card, I probably will charge them like an extra 50 cents or a dollar for their purchase just to kind of cover that fee. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so I'm, I am going to do that. Um, let's see, water and a cooler. Make sure you bring plenty of water. You don't want to be out there spending your profits going out to the snack bars for water. So just bring some water and a cooler and so forth. Um, snacks, trash bags. So, I always bring trash bags. Trash bags are very important. Um, hand sanitizer. You know, it's pretty grimy out there. So, I keep some hand sanitizer in my little bin over here. So I can show you guys this little bin I have. It's right here. Um, but anyway, I keep hand sanitizers in my little bin. I use the same thing every year. Um, also, too, make sure you grab um, your calculator. I haven't put mine in yet. So, I have a list. Pens, paper, pencils, something like that. So I keep a little notebook in here. And um, I have some, like, bring a markers or, you know, pens or pencils or something like that. Because you need to, like, if you want to keep track of your sales or something. That's what I did last year. I just made a list of everything. This was last year's. I made a list of everything that I was selling and the prices. And I tried to keep track of how many I'd sold. And so it actually worked out well, like if I needed a restroom break or something and my daughter was watching my booze, she can just look at my list. 
um, price tags. So make sure you put, have price tags if you want to use those stickers on your items. Um, what I did is, let me see here. These are from last year, but I just used these little black cards and used some nice white pen and just made myself some uh, little little tags. I haven't decided how I'm going to do my tags yet. I probably in a couple of weeks I'll I'll narrow, narrow, narrow that down, you know. So, um, but anyway, these are the ones like I used last year, and um, yep, they worked out well. And all I do is I kind of tape them on the edge of my basket or something like that, and they stay. It worked out well. Um, your phone and your charger. Don't forget that. Super important. Mostly if you're you're uh, using. You're accepting credit cards, um, band-aids. Make sure you bring band-aids. If you cut yourself, you need a way to take care of it. So bring a band-aid. Kleenex and paper towels is very important. <laughs> paper towels, mostly. You could probably get away with no Kleenex, but paper towels. Um, a price list and, and a list of all your items like I just showed you. Um, bring a sign for the front of your booth and y'all bring a jacket or a sweater even here in North Texas um, You never know how the weather's going to be and you know, and um, you never know if you're gonna need it last year I had a great 80 degree weather. I have been out there where it was 16 very windy. So you just never know um, You just never know So let's see here um, some people ask me, you know, how do I get my prices? Now, the prices that I quote of what I'm going to charge uh, for, for the items in my craft fair, I just kind of think about how much money I've spent. Kind of like how I broke it down the other day on making the little um, packs for kids. Um, I kind of break it down and then I add a little bit. Now, you're not going to get rich. If you think that you're going to go out there and you want to, you, if you say, oh, you're not charging enough. Well, let me just say that if you go out there and you charge too much just because, okay, it's worth so much more because I spent all this time on it, you're not going to sell it all. I sell things of what I think is fair and I even will run it by my husband and he'll even tell me, well, maybe that that's too much or something like that. I mean, the most expensive thing that's going to be in my booth, well, with the exception of my ladder um, is probably my traveler's notebooks or my tote bags, and those are going to be in the 25s. If I sell any any flamingos, um, if I manage to get any of those in, I will probably sell those for 45 because they take a lot of time and supplies. Um, but other than that, everything else is going to be 20 or $25 or less. So my items are not going to cost more than that. I sell these items for what I want to charge for them. You, if in your area, if you think maybe, oh, you're not charging enough, well, maybe in your area things cost a little bit more, and maybe in my area they don't. So, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I'm out there to, uh, of course, to try to make a profit, but also to have a good time and to meet people, and that is really, really a great, great thing about it. Last year, you know, I'm not going to get into how much I made last year, but I will tell you I made a huge profit last year, and it was a great day. My husband stays out with me, and I usually let him be my money holder, and um, I ended up paying my husband at the end of the day, too, you know. And I think last year I sold 75% of what I took. So um, some people, somebody has asked also, too, on my channel, um, how do you know you're going to sell it and, and all that? Well, you don't. You just have to go with the leap of faith. Uh, some craft fairs, you're going to sell a bunch. And some craft fairs, you're going to sell little. It just depends on the day and all that. Choose your craft fairs with that are well advertised. And the one I do is well advertised. And they do it every year. The city um, that is in, um, they advertise. And everybody knows about it. And craft fairs are pretty, pretty popular in North Texas. So, but anyway, yeah, just kind of, just kind of, um, call your cities if you're interested in learning about craft fairs and so forth. And, and, um, yeah, just kind of, you got to plan it. Now I have been working on craft fair stuff all year long. No, I haven't sat and made craft fair stuff every day of the year. No, I have not. I worked on that for my channel and I just thought, um, Let's just start early, and that's why I started my series early this year, because I wanted to be able to share as many items as I could 
Y'all, I'm up to number 80. I have sold, so I have shared 80 different items that you could sell in your craft fair. This doesn't mean I'm going to sell all 80 of those items. It just means those are good ideas for you. And I just pick and choose what I want to sell and what I would sell them for. So anyway, I hope that you find this helpful um, by, by planning and all that. Um, I always take off the day before the craft fair. It's my day to get snacks. It's my day to get you know, my change. It's my day to make sure all my bins and ducks are all in a row and all that stuff. Usually I start putting, pulling things out in my hall after, right after Thanksgiving. That weekend after Thanksgiving, um, that's when I usually start pulling it out because that following weekend is my craft fair. And so, yep, it, it works out good. And if you're organized, you're going to, it's going to go well. So try to remember to bring all these items. If you bring all these items, I promise you, you're going to have, you're going to be successful in making sure you have everything you need. Um, it's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. So anyway, I hope that you guys find this helpful. You know, I have to plan and I hope that um, if you needed a little help on um, what to bring and so forth, if it's your first time, then um, yeah, I hope that you found this helpful. Hope this video is not too long for you. I think I'm looking at close to 30 minutes. So I'm sorry if it's too long, but I just wanted to be able to share with you um, things that I, that I would bring and what I will be bringing to my craft fair. So anyway, yeah, thanks so much everybody for watching. Y'all have got new subscribers. Thank you so, so much for hitting that subscribe button. And if you're watching and you haven't hit the subscribe button and you are liking what you see, um, then please hit the subscribe button and you can hit the notification bell. It does let you know when I upload. I upload um, when I'm not getting ready for craft fairs. I try to upload at least five times a week. Um, this year I didn't get to upload as much as I wanted because I watched my grandsons um, on one day. And then last night I was down with my sweet dad, y'all. I went down there and let me just tell you about my dad. I got a story. Let me just tell you. Oh my goodness. So I went yesterday. I left work a little bit early so I could make it to East Texas. And I call him. Hey dad, what do you want for dinner? I don't know, whatever you want to bring. Because I always bring something. It kind of gives him a change. I said, well, what about vegetables or dumplings or something from Cracker Barrel? And he said, I said, oh, they got pancakes. He goes, oh, pancakes. My dad could eat pancakes every day of his life. He loves it. So I said, okay. So I stopped on my way and got, got pancakes for he and I. And got down there. Oh my goodness. I said, Dad, do you want me to cut your pancakes up for you? Because I was putting them on a plate after I heated them back up and stuff. He goes, oh, no, no, no. Just hand me the peanut butter. My dad loves peanut butter and bananas so much. Well, the pancakes that he got actually came with like the baked apples or whatever. So my dad put a layer of, of uh, peanut butter on his pancakes. And then he put... um. The baked apples, he put those on there, and then he put the syrup on top. And I'm thinking, man, that's like uh, a diabetic coma right there. But, oh, my goodness, he ate everybody. He loved it so much. And we just sat there and just chatted. He, my dad is 82, and, you know, if you're new to my channel, you might not know, but I recently lost my mom two months ago. And, you know, he has done just phenomenal because he knows that mama's in heaven and, and all that, and I think that that really what helped him to be able to start to heal from losing his wife, you know. But last night, I'm like, hey, Dad, you want to go down with me? Because I was doing his laundry, and I said, you want to go down? I'll push in your wheelchair, and you can go down to the laundry room with me. So he said, okay. So we get down there. He's lived there more than four years, and he goes, so this is where the laundry room is. I thought, like, yeah, Dad. So anyway, here I am pushing him down there to the laundry room, and he's holding like his chair cover and and all this. But what a fun time! And you know, and I went up. I said, Dad, you need to check your mailbox because they have like mailboxes with keys. So he said, okay. So Win got his key and everything, and went up there to check the mail. And uh, you know, it was just great. He's just walking, carrying his, or he, I was pushing him and he's carrying his junk mail. And, um, yeah, that's really all he gets in there. And sometimes he gets letters or whatever, but 
Anyway, and then he also had a little thing with me, and I said, Dad, is it raining there? This is before I got there, and he goes, nope, it's been cloudy, but I hadn't seen no rain. I, I got there, and I said, Dad, the ground is sopping wet. It's been raining, raining, raining. He goes, no. So I had to push him down to the end just so he could see the rain. Then another girl, a lady that works there, said, Mr. Thompson, do you want to stop, and do you want to come down here and watch a movie? We're having movie night, and we're having popcorn. So you and your daughter can come down. And my dad looked at her and said, nope, can't do it. We got things to do. All he wanted me to do was look under his chair to see if everything was okay. And it was, it was fine. So anyway, I thought it was pretty funny that he's telling her, nope, I got things to do. And yep, he goes, I got a lot to do. So just love spending time with him. He is just, oh, oh my goodness. I'm lucky that I that he lives, you know, within, you know, an hour and a half from me where I can go down. I try to go on Friday nights and I can go down and spend time with him and, and all that because I wanted to make sure, you know, with, you know, after losing my mom and him losing his wife of 64 years that he was going to be okay. And I think he's better than okay because he had Jesus on his side and he just, he just knew the mama suffered so much. And even though he suffers with with emphysema and COPD and he can't breathe half the time and all that. He still got his faith and he's still, oh my goodness, let me just say, he's just, he's just an awesome dad. I'm really blessed to have him as my dad and I'm blessed that I'm able to spend time with him. So friends, what I take away from this story is, is if you still have a parent, I mean, losing my mom, I mean, I would go down at least every other week when my mom was good and everything. And I would go down and see them every other week. And my sister would go, like, go every other week. And then it got to where I think that I think I, I something just told me you need to go more. So I was going as much as I could to go down. And, you know, now that I lost my mom, you know, you just treasure the time. Even if all you're doing is pushing someone down the hall to get their laundry and checking their mailbox. It's time I spent with him. You know, it's time I spent. And I think he would have stayed up all night long if I wanted him to. Even if he's falling over exhausted just so he can stay up. And I always tell him, okay, dad, I think it's time for us to go to sleep. And he does. He just like, okay. And he'll get up and go to the restroom and come back and get himself settled in and all that. And before you know it, he's snoring away. But yeah, it's just good times. So moral to that story is if you still have a parent don't waste the time and just cherish, even though it was a Friday night and that isn't what most people might want to do. Well, to me, it was a party because I was able to go with my dad and help him check his mailbox. So anyway, thanks so much, everyone. I hope you found this, this video um, helpful to you and I hope you have an awesome, awesome day and thank you so much. Bye.